Mother Godavari Mata Upasani Baba was a direct disciple of Shirdi Sai Baba. He was a great Vedic scholar and a great intellectual. His mind was therefore turned outwards when he surrendered to Shirdi Sai Baba. He was immensely blessed by Sai Baba. However, after some time, Sai Baba instructed him to go and live at Sakuri, a few miles away from Shirdi. He was also given the permission by Sai Baba to teach yearning spiritual aspirants. Upasani Baba implicitly obeyed his guru's command. In due course, Upasani Baba acquired Siddhis, miraculous powers, and started performing miracles, which made people worship him as a kind of god. Noticing that Upasani Baba was wasting the spiritual energy passed on to him by Sai Baba, a few compassionate devotees of Sai Baba went to Shirdi and reported it to him. Shirdi Sai Baba reacted apparently angrily, saying, I wanted him to help spiritual aspirants by teaching them. Instead, he is doing this dog's work. At the very same instant in Sikori, Upasani Baba began behaving like a dog, barking instead of talking, roaming on the roads on all fours, eating from garbage. Upasani Baba's close devotees were deeply pained by this deviant behavior, as he was a very great scholar who always had adhered to the Vadika Dharma, the traditional austerities. So they went to Sai Baba and pleaded that he release Upasani Baba from the curse pronounced on him. Sai Baba, in all his compassion, responded by saying, Did I curse him? I reprimanded only his performance of Siddhis. Upasani is a great scholar and will continue his spiritual mission. Immediately at Sakori, Upasani Baba became normal. Realizing his folly, Upasani Baba wanted to punish himself. He told his disciples that he had performed miracles solely to be looked upon as an important person. In atonement, he had them raise a steel cage in a prominent public place in Sakori, in which he lived for some time on all fours. During those strange days, a young ten-year-old girl served him by feeding him by hand and keeping his bent-down body clean. This girl, whom Upasani Baba profusely blessed, became the future Godavari Mata. Godavari Mata was born 24th December 1914 in Shagawan, a remote village in Maharashtra. Her parents were pious and God-fearing. Godavari's mother, Ramabai, had an extraordinary vision wherein a goddess blessed her daughter and gave a clear indication of her daughter's exalted destiny. Even as a child, Godavari would be absorbed in worship and adoration of images of gods. Moreover, she had a magical touch. The food that she touched seemed to grow in abundance. She had an amazingly retentive memory which enabled her, her to recite any poem or passage that was read out to her once. Another notable feature of Mataji's early childhood was her instinctive attraction to all holy men and the reciprocal affection she induced in the hearts of the great yogis and mahatmas. They probably recognized in the young child her potential for spiritual realization. One sadhu even told her parents, This daughter of yours is no ordinary soul. One day she will meet a great yogi through whom she will realize her exalted state and lead pious souls to their goal. This prophecy was fulfilled when one day in February 1924, Godavari Mata went to Sakuri at the tender age of 10 and met her guru, 
Upasani Baba. The child Godavari was filled with devotion. The master recognized his completion in the girl who stood before him. Likewise, Godavari intuited that she had met her guru. Upasani Baba told Godavari, All this belongs to you. You will have to see to its management. Godavari Mata's unique outpouring of devotion to her guru and the many incredible hardships she suffered with great fortitude and humility in the service of the Master are inspiring examples of what true sadhana means. Not that the mother needed sadhana to realize herself. She was born almost liberated. Her early life is a moving saga of surrender and devotion, which cannot fail to inspire those who seek salvation through the path of para-bhakti, that is, intense devotion for God. Once, when asked by a devotee when exactly she had obtained that bliss, which is inseparable from self-realization, Godavari Mata smiled and said, When? There was not a moment when I did not have it. Godavari Mata advocated the practice of adoring God in any form suitable to the temperament of the aspirant. Japa Siddhi, spiritual attainment through incantation, according to Mother, has been given to us as a special and easy method of attainment in this difficult time of the Kali Yuga. Mother laid great stress on the powers of the Mantra Shastra, and she usually initiated deserving sadakas, spiritual aspirants, by giving them appropriate namas or mantras. Those who have been blessed with such initiation by Mata know the powerful impact of these mantras, both on their inner and outer life. The personification of purity, the mother laid great stress on the gradual cleansing of one's thoughts, motives, and actions. She gave a tremendous push to those who sought her grace for spiritual progress, but at the same time, she enjoined on the sadakas the necessity of persistent effort. Guru's grace does not operate until it is brought down by the persistent hunger and effort of the disciple. Godavari said, The highest state man can aspire for is that of God, and to attain it, he has to exert himself. By self-effort, man becomes God. Effort can make even God descend on earth or those of the earth attain heaven. Though nurtured in almost monastic traditions of ascetic living, Godavari Mataji has had the courage and the vision to reject all formal manifestations of austerities. She has ushered in an era of gracious living where yaga or giving up is to be practiced to control one's inner life, thoughts, and desires. Surrender. Mother encouraged the performance of pujas and maintained that to worship and adorn idols with flowers, jewels, and sandal paste was an outlet of man's primitive aesthetical impulse. 